a lot of producers have great beats. They have good traffic and they're making no sales because they are not incentivizing sales. They're not keeping in contact with people who engage with their beats and they're just not collecting any sort of customer data. So watch this. I guarantee you he's going to give away the trick and it's, and it's something really obvious. I started taking online beat leasing seriously in about 2017. By that point, everyone was already doing it. It was, as they say, saturated. Now I've made a lot of videos explaining what I did to build my uh, beat selling career. Granted, what advantage I had was that I had already quit all my jobs. I was already doing this full time. But I know there are a lot of skeptics, a lot of people who believe that somehow I fast tracked my way in either by getting lucky or by leveraging my very limited and minimal music industry success to somehow blow up and make a killing off of beat leasing. Now, if you've watched my videos, you'll know that I've always uh, had multiple income streams within my overall beat selling business. That has helped a lot, but you know, beat leasing is still the core of my, my revenue model. But I, I share my strategies from email marketing to paid ads on Meta. One of the greatest things I did do though, to learn about the online beat selling landscape was just look at what successful producers in that space were already doing and try to do what they were doing. A lot of producers I see complaining about how they're not getting the same type of love or the same type of sales or the same kind of attention that certain other producers in the same space are getting. So my question to them is, are you doing the same things that they're doing? You know, a lot of people feel like this game is unfair or it's rigged or it's about luck or someone's gatekeeping. And the people who they perceive as being more successful and I guess luckier or more favored than them are outworking them, simply put. Or they have a better strategy, something. For example, you know, a lot of people will say, um, yeah, I make better beats than DJ Payne one. Why am I not getting sales like him? If, in fact, you did what I did and worked, you know, 16 hours a day and dropped two beats a day and, you know, invested X amount of dollars in, in ads every month and spent, you know, 10 years giving away free sound kits and drum packs until finally at one point deciding to start selling some while still giving away others. You just basically did everything I did exactly as I did it and still didn't find any progress and, and, and didn't you know reach anywhere near the following or the earning potential that I did. Then I would say, okay, maybe there is some kind of Illuminati conspiracy. I mean, maybe someone is just sneaking into my house at night and, and replacing all my tea with goat's blood. I don't know, but I think you'd have a case. So here are the top three strategies that I stole from others. Number one, this was a gift. Dream Life told me this. He told me to stop making the most current sounding beats and just focus on the beats that I enjoyed making and that I had already found success with in, in the music business. For me, that was, you know, the, the old school soulful sort of, not necessarily old school, but like old school contemporary soulful beats. Realistically, if I had tried to compete with a unfamiliar genre and just tried to make, you know, whatever type beats up, future type beats or, or whatever felt like a more current sound at the time, it wouldn't have been sustainable for me. I would have I would have gotten burnt out very quickly because that's just not necessarily what I loved making as much as my core sound. And also I'm competing with people who were already established in that space. It would have been a lot harder for me than for me to just exist in a niche that I felt comfortable in. Number two, Dylan Graham told me to keep my email marketing conversational, not super professional, not super salesy. That helped me actually engage with potential customers and build relationships with humans. I personally would feel strange about spending my money with a total stranger. So I understand why engaging in conversations with a producer can make recording artists more comfortable about actually buying beats. And if producers aren't responsive, you know, that's another red flag. Why would I, for example, go to a store to spend my money if they never answer the phone and never posted their business hours? This is the third thing. And this, you know, again, this goes back to the fact that I had the space to do this. Around 2017, Cash Money AP was the guy to, to beat in the online space. Now he's the man in the industry. He uploaded a single beat a day. It felt impossible at the time for me to be that prolific. And here's where a lot of producers mess up. I could have looked at Cash Money AP success and, and thought, well, he got lucky. 
I'm not even going to try to compete with him. He, he got lucky. He already sacrificed a family member. I'm not going to do that. I'm way too real for that. I'm going to end up you know, 55 years old on a park bench talking about why I was realer than Cash Money AP. That's why I never sold any beats. So that's the path a lot of people are on, be honest. But as I said at the beginning, those producers aren't doing what the top sellers are doing. The producers that just sit there and, and, and rationalize why other people are successful and they're not. I get the hate all the time. People telling me I cheat the system. People tell me I'm not shit. Bitch, I upload two beats a day. Some of these goofballs don't even upload two beats a month. I personally saw the answer is very obvious. If I wanted to sell like Cash Money AP, I had to work like him or even harder. So I went from three beats a week to five beats a week to seven beats a week. Now I'm somewhere between 10 and 14. You know, I'm not saying that that's the sole reason why my, my sales increased or why my business grew, but I definitely don't think it hurt. I had that moment where I had to really seriously ask myself, what's it gonna be, playboy? You can either step up or step off. But let's look at another producer story. This is a producer I never even heard of. I've never seen their channel. YouTube is suggesting me all these new producer channels. I don't know why, but this dude, and he's British, takes us through, why oh, did I say that? That's not relevant. He takes us through his beat selling journey and he's still very early in his beat selling journey. And I wanna see what he did and if I can add anything to the conversation. Headphones on. His name is Joe Gautry and he's a smaller channel. This time last year to the date of recording this video, I started selling beats on BeatStars. Oh, he's got the SSL. I just got that, shout out to memory. What is that other thing? What's that shiny red thing he has? Someone leave a comment. I don't know what that is. It looks cool though. This time last year to the date of recording this video, I started selling beats on BeatStars as a beat seller, not just BeatStars as well as I will get into in this video. Okay, so before I do get into nitty-gritty to show you how much I've actually earned, I want to... Okay, so let's, let's notice that he is making Sam Smith type beats, acoustic pop ballads. He's, he's clearly making something that he enjoys making because that's not what is typical, I think, of what producers think of when they consider jumping into the, the online beat leasing space. As you can see here from one year, I've got 349 followers, 50,100 plays, streams, whatever you want to call it in total on BeatStars, and I've uploaded 222 tracks. That Okay, so he's dedicated. 222 tracks is a lot in a year. I'm sure he had a back catalog, but even if he did, that's a that's a good number. Clearly this guy is exceptional in his productivity because a lot of producers aren't prepared for that kind of output. I'm not saying you need that kind of output. I'm not saying you need to make a, a, a beat or two a day the way I do. Everyone has a different path but it certainly helps to be prolific. It certainly helps to be in a habit of being able to make music all the time, being in the habit <clears throat> of making music all the time. We'll get into it later because I think he has custom beats as well. But think about that. If someone purchases a custom beat from you, you don't want to keep them waiting for a month or two while you gather up your artistic inspiration and finally burn enough sage so that you you're reinvigorated this is a job guys that is something that was a goal of mine my goal by the end of the, the this year when it was up was to upload 200 so the fact that i've exceeded it by 22 is the the first win that i will call for myself as personal goals i'm really proud of myself for uploading 222 beats now that's not to say that i rushed them but the three fundamentals you got to understand the three most important things about being a decent beat seller is quality, quantity, and consistency. Yeah, oh, yes. Thank you for saying that. Because there's that, that silly conversation where a lot of people will say quality and quantity cannot coexist, and they absolutely can. They absolutely can. And as long as you tell yourself that you either have to choose quality or quantity, you'll always have an excuse for not doing shit. So I had to almost challenge myself to upload 200 beats to try and get better. So not every beat I uploaded was my best work. But I'm glad he said that too. I'm sorry, I'm pausing again. I'm glad he said that too, because even if you're making beats that aren't necessarily great, maybe your first 10 aren't as good as the last 10 you've made. But one, art is subjective. There are people who will love those first 10 beats, even if you don't necessarily love them. And in addition, that 
222 beat journey will teach you a lot about your process. It will help you streamline your process. It will help you become more efficient. It will help you become more effective as a producer. Underrated tip. But getting into the rhythm of uploading and creating beats every yeah. day, I yep, yep. notice how much better I've got just as a producer in general because it's putting myself under pressure oh. to perform better under pressure and to get into a strict routine and stick to it. So yeah, he said it. That as in itself was a big win and 50,000 plays. So it's it's pretty, you know, for from what I've seen on BeatStars account, 222 tracks and 50,000 is okay. There are some pages of 222 tracks and a million plays, but it all depends on what tracks pop off. For a bit of context, I sell pop instrumentals and pop weirdly is quite a niche genre in the beat selling world, especially mm -hmm. like trap and Afrobeat seem to do a hell of a load better and there's only a handful of successful pop producers doing beat selling that i can name and i was on air bit as well this is a decision that i only started in october 2022 i only started uploading to Airbit then as i started to see that if i can maximize my reach possible so i've got 2000 plays on Airbit since october 2022 and i've uploaded 145 tracks the reason why i've been able to load that many beats so quickly mm is because I'd already uploaded these beats on BeatStars, so I'm playing catch up on my Airbit account. And we've got five followers. Now, the one thing that I'll quickly say in the Airbit versus BeatStars argument, BeatStars definitely has the better reach. By I, I wonder too, if the fact that he uploaded 145 beats in such a short period of time, rather than staggering them, because this was October, this was, you know, from October to now, that's not very long to to drop 145 beats so maybe that cadence was a little too quick and that's why his airbit numbers are so much lower i don't know far and organic growth airbit not so much but there are signs like as you can see like this month i was using airbit's free 100 round promo that i got when i got a pro account and i got airbit so i can monetize beats because it's got very good youtube monetization features so that's why that number is very high, but we do have more streams every month and we're nearly halfway and we've only got 101 plays so far, but I haven't been uploading. So hopefully we can beat January to show that Airbit's growing. The next thing is the YouTube type beat channel. And in one year of uploading, I have got 128,000 views on my beats, 1,800 hours of watch time, 485 subscribers. And that is mad that my beats on YouTube alone have been listened to a hundred over a hundred thousand times. Because when you think about what we've just seen on BeatStars with 50,000, this is over double. And that's the power of a type B channel. This isn't a type B channel which has massively grown. You can see that my subscriber rate is increasing. And this is down to a couple of fundamentals, which I'm gonna discuss with you uh, in a second. But even though I haven't got to a thousand subscribers and even though this YouTube channel isn't monetized, God you can it. see that as a promotional tool for beat selling, a YouTube type B channel is very much still one of the best way to promote beats, even in 2020. It is. I, I am forever frustrated with YouTube, but when I check my analytics, I'm still sending a lot of traffic to my beat stars via YouTube. I just am um, youtube's not going away anytime soon and the last thing which is very fundamental to my beat selling this year was my email subscriber list and i so far i have managed to culminate a list of 1323 contacts now these are contacts which i've got out myself onto instagram soundcloud and other places or artists that i've worked with in the past and added them onto here and then we got subscribers and customers so these are all the people who've either bought a beat of me this year or they've downloaded beat for free because I want to discuss more my actual model before I show you how much I've earned because I want to explain what my whole business model has been for selling beats and how I've been selling beats. I made this website myself using Wix and I use an embedded Blaze players so I could create this like online store. And I'm all about encouraging traffic to there and always emphasizing the free downloads for non-profit use. The reason that is, is because then that's how you can capture email addresses because you can offer a free beat for an email sign up. So that's how you can target people because the one thing I've always understood now from selling beats for a year is someone isn't gonna buy a beat after listening to it once. They're gonna want to write over it. They're gonna want to, you know, mull over it and see if yes. that's the song for them and if they vibe it. So that's yeah. why you can get so many streams on a song but no purchases because I feel like people who messaged me in the past year asking, why they're getting loads of views but they're not getting any beat sales. I will take a look at their beat store and sometimes 
there, there's little to no free downloads happening for Beats. Maybe they don't have free download enabled, or they do, but there's no free downloads happening, which makes you think it's not necessarily that people don't want to download the beat, but you're not encouraging them to, giving them an incentive to. A lot of producers have great beats. They have good traffic and they're making no sales because they are not incentivizing sales. They're not keeping in contact with people who engage with their beats and they're just not collecting any sort of customer data. So watch this. I guarantee you he's going to give away the trick and it's and it's something really obvious. So I went free for non-profit, so I removed the tag. I used Airbit because Airbit's got really good YouTube monetization so people could use the beat, upload it if they want to upload it for non-profit use, but then I get an income from that. But most of the time, if someone downloads a beat and they really vibe it, I sometimes have found that two weeks to a month later, they've actually bought it. So that in itself is another reason why you should enable free downloads if you haven't already, because you've got to give artists time to really fall in love with the beat and then purchase it. I've had so many occasions in the past year where someone's downloaded a beat for free and you know you may not hear it for a while i had someone two months later after downloading the beat for free saying i've written this over it. i'm going to buy this beat ask a question about it once more i've had people come back after a year and buy the beat so this was the first two months of uploading beats this is february to april this is why people give up because they see that and as you can see i uploaded probably 30 to 40 beats and I made one sale for $50. So about a month after our sale, we got another one for $30. We had to wait yet another month after that before we got a $19.95 sale. And then June to July really started to pick up and all of this still is on the marketplace. There's no pro page. I hadn't set up my website yet and my website would be the purple because that's the Blaze players stats and pro. That's interesting. That, that shows you how important SEO is within BeatStars. People are, random people are searching just the BeatStars website to, to purchase beats. They are. Use all, I talked about using all the, the different options on BeatStars. Use the SEO, use the keywords, use playlists, use albums. All that stuff is searchable. So by in July, I earned $393 in that period, which to me felt like so much more. And I thought, wow, like this is starting to work now. And this is when I started documenting on my YouTube channel because I thought, hey, like, there's something to this. I'm still not getting it right. And I think there's still a lot of momentum to be had from this, but selling 10 beats, I was, I thought there was a lot more than I thought at this stage because I genuinely had the mentality that it would take a year to even get any sort of traction at all. It took me many years, except I think my first month because I was lucky and I collaborated with some pretty established folks on the platform. I think I hit 700 my first month or maybe it was my second month i don't know I, but i was trying to buy a house 700 dollars wasn't going to get me there from august the first to i'm going to go to the end of october and you can see this is when things get very interesting because i just want to quickly emphasize that consistency of beat sales isn't what you think it is so august just after july I've, i always remember june to august feeling like i was getting a beat sale every week and it was amazing and then all of a sudden, the whole of August into September just went dead. I didn't get any beat sales at all. Even though I was being consistent, I was uploading three to five times a week. But I thought I was, I'm clearly doing something wrong because I've had to wait a whole month to get another beat sale and it was $15. And in September, again, like I got two sales early on and then I had to wait till October. So even though it looks like there's a lot happening here in beat sales, sometimes there was about a month gap between some sales. Even though I was uploading every day, I was doing mm. YouTube, I hadn't started email marketing at this point. I still hadn't started my website at this point. So I've actually got very limited amount of marketing going on, but I'm making beat sales. And we made $555 in this term. That all organic too. All of a sudden, and I'm enjoying it. At this point, I was probably spending the first two hours of my day making and uploading a beat. And then I'd spend the rest of the day doing freelance work. So this is very much still a side hustle for me. So it's a big win. And then right here, in the end of October, I think it was about the 16th of October, I started a pro page. Now, the reason I started a pro page is because I wanted to start trying to collect emails. And for my YouTube channel, I didn't want to drive people to the website marketplace anymore. Now, here's why. So when you take people to the marketplace, listen to this, you're actually inviting them to go onto BeatStars and they can listen to your beat, like it, but then they see the search bar to go search all the other producers. And I thought I've got 
enough beats up. I think I'd uploaded over 100 beats at this point. Keep them on your I've site. I've got no reason to let people try and listen to anyone else's beats because I've got enough beats, enough selection for them to look through. So why should I encourage them to check out other producers? Not yep. to sound selfish, but you're running at a the business. Day, you're the one trying to get this artist to buy your beats. Yeah. So using the pro page, I changed every single YouTube link on my YouTube Type Beat channel to a pro page. Yep. So people would have to go to my pro page to check out the beat. And then if they wanted to check out other beats, I knew full well that they were checking out others and my beats. So then all of a sudden, just from one beat doing well, I was suddenly getting more views than other beats. So that's why a pro page or website at this time realized is one of the most important things about being a beat seller because once you've got enough of physical product or enough selection or a big enough beat catalog yep. you can that's the importance of the catalog that's the importance of your branding you can give people enough selection to go to their beat store and have a proper browse through because yep. now all of a sudden you've got your own business your own hub you don't need beat stars to try and always promote your beats for you because if you advertise them to go to beat stars you're not really inviting them to go check out your beats you're going you're inviting people to go check out everyone's beats on beat stars and have a browse through beat stars not your own beat store mm. so so i'm going to show you till now the end we'll go for the end of the year so november and then this is where things suddenly got very crazy because i started yeah. my own website as well as a pro page november is a great sales month 74 dollars from november to december and December also, sucks though. Look at how shitty December had a was. Custom beat sale. So someone had messaged me from my pro page asking for a custom beat. So I made another $150 on top of that. So this is actually one, $1,124 if nice. I've done the math right. So this was a, a huge period. You can see up $1,300 worth of beats, but I did a Black Friday sale. So that means there was a heavy discount this month. So I could have actually made this much. Just, just pay attention. He's being really subtle and humble about everything, but pay attention to all of the, the, the tiny details. He's doing everything right. I don't know what his background is. It might be in marketing. Maybe he's watched a bunch of videos on YouTube. He's just a student of, of online beat selling. And I never thought when I started, I'm not even a year in yet, and we're getting these kind of numbers. You can see I started pushing the website, started trying to get a little bit of loyalty, and we started to actually get sales using a website as well as the pro page. So the pro page at this point, fundamentally just using for YouTube. So any sales I get from the pro page are from YouTube only. And when I started email marketing as well and using my website, so every single one of these sales is through email marketing. And then we just got the website marketplace, which you know does its own thing. And this was a very good day for me because I, I two beats which weren't really getting any views. Someone actually put in a custom offer for, so I let them buy it. So that as well was a really cool thing. So you can see November was a ridiculous month. If we're just looking at November, if you look at December though, it's a very different story. I actually only did one, maybe, yeah, I think just one. December is tough because of the holidays. It's just a tough month. Sale in the whole of December, $15. But it was Christmas, everyone, you know, probably calming down. And I didn't actually, I was moving house at this point, so I didn't do any sort of marketing. The British people have such an interesting way of saying things. Moving house. A whole month, I actually didn't upload that many beats. I think I only uploaded like five, six beats in December. So that's why December was so quiet. So yet again, another month where it's... Because he was moving house and people were out buying gift. Gone quiet. This year, I've been taking things incredibly seriously. Like you would not believe <laughs> the graph has gone in. And so far we have made $872.75 on BeatStars. I've had an incredible amount of custom orders this year. I've had another $150 custom beat order and two 250 ones from one person. So in terms of custom beat sales, I've actually made $650 this year. See, and that was, this is what I'm talking about. Another gem return customers, loyal customers, giving customers the best, doing everything possible to give customers the best experience so they come back. Producers, we can't be transactional about this stuff. Some people are gonna come and, and buy that one beat and you'll never hear from them again, but take it from me, if you can get two, three, four, five loyal customers that you give a, a good experience to who are serious artists who have maybe investors, they have good jobs, they're investing in, in their 
music careers consistently, that stuff is going to be the foundation of your revenue model. And it's really going to help you. So anything that you can do to and eventually people are asking me to make a beat selling course, that's going to be and I am working on it. Spoiler alert. That's going to be so fundamental. That's going to be such an important part of this course. Just 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 showing you what I've done, because that changed the game for me. Retaining customers, attracting them to you in the first place, adding value. This is a smart dude. I'm going to actually cut it off there because it's just really long. But check him out. Joe Gautry Music is his YouTube channel. And I imagine he's going to continue updating us on his journey. Aside from being full of a lot of really helpful tips for producers who are trying to make their first sale or their first thousand dollars off of selling beats online. What I really like about this video is the fact that so many producers are getting bombarded with this narrative that selling beats online is too saturated. It's impossible. It's dead. If it's so impossible, how did this guy experience this much organic growth and financial gain in just a matter of a few months? So this should be encouraging. There are a lot of people who are going month by month on their journeys. Um, Dilly Gotta Bumpin' is one of, of the people who's, who's doing that. And you know he's the guy that, that's hit over a million sales, a million in sales, I should say. A lot of people are skeptics. I understand being skeptical. Don't be so skeptical that you talk yourself out of pursuing a career that you want to pursue. I think there's just way too much discouragement in the producer community right now. With all of these harmful narratives, I don't know why they're, they're, they're being spread so aggressively. Some people theorize that it's just producers who want to clear out the space so that they have less competition. I don't think that's true. I think there are people who are actually so disillusioned themselves that they want nothing more than to create misery so they have more company. And that's, a, that's another video. For now, hope this inspires you. Shout out to Joe for the content. Till next time, peace.